If you've ever waited and waited to board your flight and you finally get to take your seat, and then? Well, folks, we've had light snow overnight and there are still flurries in the area. We're going to go ahead and head over and get in line to de-ice. Yeah, de-icing. It, it, it causes a delay, right? But it's not as simple as just spraying down the plane with a garden hose of antifreeze. It's a bit more complicated than that, and it's so important for planes to fly. So we've got Jim Cantori out there uh, outside this plane right now. Jim, take us through the science behind de-icing. All right, Jen, I'll do that. In the meantime, gra grab me a gin and tonic while you're there. Uh, and let's talk about this. Of course, we have different solutions for different things, right? There's de-icing and there's anti-icing. When we have precipitation falling, and we expect to come up through a cloud layer that has super cool water droplets or liquid water that's going to be there for potentially 500 or even 1,000 feet. We've got to make this aircraft so that it doesn't change its aerodynamic properties. So the first thing we do is we got to knock off whatever's there. That's pretty much the de-icing that you see going on there. It's an orange solution called glycol. It's kind of interesting because it almost smells a little bit like maple syrup. It goes on hot and there's, it's very methodical to how it's applied. From the beginning of the plane, typically not the nose, all the way to the back, starting at the wing tips, coming to the fuselage, and then going to the back of the plane from the top of the tail all the way down to the wings again. Of course, once that's supplied, uh, and this is all done, by the way, on a de-icing pad. This stuff doesn't flop out all over the runway. They go to a special pad for this uh, to get it done. Typically, there's anywhere from one to four machines that do it. Most of the times, they'll have two nozzles on it if you're getting this type of procedure. All right, so we've done the glycol. Now we move to the second solution, which is called a type four. This is not heated, but this is really your anti-icing solution. This is very, very important because as you get out on the tarmac and, and get back uh, to taxiing for your flight, uh, this is going to allow you to not be what we call the condensation nuclei. In other words, when you're going through those super cool water droplets, the plane will not be the one that the ice adheres to because you have that essentially antifreeze on there because of that solution that they've added. So this is a two-step process when there's precipitation coming down. Let's take a hypothetical situation where an aircraft wasn't de-iced or an aircraft doesn't have a, no cone, a nose cone or engines that have automatic heaters on them. Let's take that solution. Here's what happens. Again, I mentioned this. This is the condensation nuclei, the plane. It, it's cold. Uh, it's below 32 degrees. But these water droplets exist as a liquid. But as soon as they hit that condensation nuclei, boom, they start to freeze. And when you start adding ice to a plane, the wings, the nose, the flaps, you completely change the aerodynamics of the plane. And the plane, frankly, will not be able to fly. So for the time that you spend on the tarmac, whether it be 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 45 minutes, getting that de-icing done, as you can see, it is well worth the wait.